Hey, good day and good evening, everyone. No surprise, it's Tuesday, so we are here again. It's so great to see you all here back again. I'm Sophie and I will be your host today. Welcome to IVF webinars by Egg Donation Friends. We are here every week, same place, same time. And we are here to link you with best fertility experts from all over the world. And all our IVF webinars are recorded and you can find it in one place at degdonationfriends.com slash IVF dash webinars. You can watch it, you can share it, you can research this huge source of knowledge. And of course, it's our pleasure if you do so. As we plan the webinars for the next year, we would be glad if you have any suggestions and uh, any ideas of the topics uh, which interest you most. And if you'd like to write to me directly, you can always do that. And this is my email, sophie at ivfmedia.org. IVF webinars are brought to you with help of our partners. And our partners are National Fertility Society, Fertility Clinics Abroad, and Donor Conception Network. And this evening, we are here with Birol Aydin, IVF Laboratory Director at IVMED Clinic. And actually, we are live from Philadelphia this evening, and we will talk about nuclear and spindle transfer for women with embryo development problem. And the presentation will take around 25 minutes. And of course, after the presentation, as always, we will continue uh, with your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type your questions in the chat section, starting even from now. And I think that this is it from me for now. So if we are ready, Birol, we can start. Yeah, sure. Sure, welcome, fingers crossed, good luck, and let's do this. Hey, good evening, everybody. Nice to be here with you. I am Birol Aydin, IVF Laboratory Director of IVMED Clinic, Kiev, Ukraine. Actually, I am in Philadelphia now for American Society of Re Reproductive Medicine Conference. It's one of the biggest IVF conference in the world. First, let me introduce myself. I have up to 13 years of clinical embryology experience, up to 10 years of egg donation and cryobanking and surrogacy experience, and five years of spindle and nucleus transfer experience on clinical and research base. Today, we will try to talk for the alternative methods for the egg donation program. Aim of the talks to give all opportunities while you may carry up your own genes during the pregnancy. Also, we will talk about main reasons about low egg quality and what will be the clinical solutions for the treatment. What about egg quality? Assisted reproductive treatments can be performed to help achieve pregnancy. Poor egg quality is one of the main causes of repeated failures in assisted reproduction treatments. The quality of the eggs is mainly determined by small organelles named mitochondria, the energy suppliers of the cells together with other factors present in the cytoplasm of the eggs. So egg has basically polar body which will supply maturation of the egg, zona pellucida which will protect genetic material and composition of egg, perivitelline space which will protect egg wall from damage and will supply sperm penetration, and egg cytoplasm which will supply food and energy for the egg. What is the main solution? Many times, patients who are dealing with poor egg quality experience with several IVF failed attempts due to impaired embryo development and have to be treated with conventional egg donation programs to be able to have a child. What causes poor egg quality? Maternal age, up to 40 years old egg quality dropped because while maternal age is increasing also aging of egg increasing and maturation level drop 
also cyt cytoplasmic activity decrease. Polycystic ovary syndrome nowadays 5 to 10 percent of women has PCOS syndrome. Mainly PCOS syndrome show, show itself by irregular menstrual period, abnormal or absent ovulation. Main effect of polycystic ovary syndrome are low quality of egg because of low androgen hormone and LH production. Ovarian reserve, which is connected with maternal age, polycystic ovary syndrome, and endometriosis. Genetic factors which carry up from the last generation or genetic mutation potential. Endometriosis directly affected to egg quality. Mitochondria in an egg cell breakdown affected by the lack of energy for the egg. Why egg donation need an alternative? Mitochondria degeneration will decrease woman's chance of getting pregnant. Age of egg, the mitochondria get run down. They start to get mutations in their DNA. And that lack of energy doesn't allow embryos to sustain fertilization. In this case, if we can solve the mitochondrial degener degeneration, we will have chance to repair nuclear function inside of oocyte. Of course, each couple have social and genetic right to carry up their own genes during pregnancy. However, egg donation is always easy alternative to achieve pregnancy. But still, psychological and ethical thoughts are not considering from the most of the specialists. What is the alternatives for the egg donation? Basically, we have two alternatives, spindle transfer and nucleus transfer. What is spindle? When cell division is happening in the cell, chromosomes can be shared equally because of spindle. Spindle has very important role for the cell division and for the genetic potential of the egg. How we can determine spindle? Only special software and polarization system on the microscope can be determined spindle in the egg cell. System can be determined spindle after the cleaning of cumulus cell complex from the oocyte. Spindle view system is using in the limited number of the clinic in the world because system need experienced specialist and high cost investing. What is spindle transfer? The replacement of the entire cytoplasm of poor egg quality. This procedure is based on transferring the spindle which containing the genetic material of the egg from an affected woman into donor eggs with a healthy cytoplasm which had their spindle removed. The eggs resulting for the, from the procedure with the repaired cytoplasm can then be inseminated by conventional techniques XC intrastoplasmic sperm injection with the sperm of the patient's partner giving the intended parents a chance of having a child genetically related to them. Maternal spindle transfer has almost five basic steps. First, the spindle of chromosomes is removed from the donor egg and discarded. Then, the spindle of chromosomes is removed from the intending mother's egg and transferred to the inoculated donor egg. The intending mother egg is discarded. Third, the reconstructed oocyte contains the intending mother nuclear DNA and donor's mitochondrial DNA. The egg is then fertilized with the intending father's sperm. The embryo develops in 
in vitro techniques and is transferred to the womb of the woman who will carry up the child. As you see in the picture, mitochondria with normal DNA inside of donor oocyte spindle discarded and then intended mother oocyte spindle take out and the transfer to donor X. So finally after the fertilization we get reconstructed zygote and pronuclear stage of zygote. What about advantage of the spindle transfer? It will give families affected by serious mitochondrial disease a chance of having healthy children free of the wasting and often life-limiting disease. The study suggests mitochondrial donation could prevent more than 12,400 women in the USA from transmitting mitochondrial disease, meaning at least 770 babies could be saved from this disease annually. This number could be increased in Europe and Asia. Maternal spindle transfer has been tested on human eggs and method led to the development of blastocyst, hollow structures containing a cluster of cells that developed in early embryonic development, less mechanical and morphological damage during manipulation of spindle transfer. What is the pronuclear transfer? Pronuclear transfer consists of performing in vitro fertilization using the eggs of the affected woman whose mitochondria contain mutant DNA, mitochondrial DNA, and the sperm of the future father, and subsequent extraction of the pronucleus on day one of development, leaving behind most of the mutate mitochondria. These pronuclei are transferred to an inoculated zygote with healthy mitochondria. They are transferred to be an anacleoid zygote, not an egg, since the developmental state must be the same. The hybrid zygote is then developed in vitro until reaches an appreciate state for transfer of the uterus. Basically, pronuclear transfer has six steps. First, the intending mother's eggs is fertilized by the intending father's sperm. Then the donor egg is also fertilized by the intending father's sperm. The pronuclei are removed from the single cell zygote of the donor egg and discarded. The pronuclei are removed from the intending mother fertilized egg and transferred to an inoculated fertilized donor egg. The inoculated fertilized egg of the intending mother is discarded. The reconstructed embryo contains pronuclear DNA from the intending parents and healthy mitochondria from the donor. The embryo develops in vitro and is transferred to the womb of the woman who will carry up the child. As you see on the picture, donor oocyte already fertilized a zygote to discarded nucleus of donor X and to remove nucleus of intended mother oocyte and transfer it in, inside of donor oocyte. And we got reconstructed zygote. Advantage of pronuclear transfer there is no risk of fertilization because transfer already between zygotes. Of course, better blastocyst outcome. It will give families affected by serious mitochondrial disease a chance of having healthy children free of advising and often life-limiting disease. Technique and mechanical micromanipulation requesting experience and special cultivation method to, during micromanipulation. As you see on the video, first uh, we open 
zona pellucida with a laser technology. Then carefully we enter inside of cytoplasm and we start to aspirate pronucleus from the intending mother oocyte. While we are doing this mechanical aspiration, of course, we should be carefully to give damage to pronuclei. So carefully we need to aspirate with under special cultivation technique, solution and special setup of the microscope. So experience is really important during the micro manipulation. If we talk about the result, according to our experience, we will share with you some of the results of the, our clinics and partner clinics. Number of patients 21, number of total oocyte 97, number of fertilized oocyte after the spin tr tr transfer 24, Fertilization rate after the spindle transfer 86.44%. Number of degeneration rate after the spindle transfer 1.28%. Number of degener degenerate zygote after the nucleus transfer 3.89%, which is really low, exactly the same, uh, more or less same degeneration rate for the conventional IVF. Total cleavage rate after the nucleus transfer 81.76%, total cleavage rate after the spindle transfer 77.34%, and total cleavage rate after the nucleus transfer 82.79%. So what about blastocyst outcome? Blastocyst rate after the spindle transfer 67.54%, Blastosis rate after the nucleus transfer 74.66%. Embryo transfer and aneuploid rate. Number of embryo transfer 12 patient. Number of clinical pregnant patient 5. Age average is 41.5%. And aneuploid rate 58.64%, which is really high for the aeuploid. Uh, embryo number so what about um, your visit for the Kiev for the Ukraine of course our clinic and international de department supply for us the more comfortable travel during your treatment if we talk about our clinic we have uh, full equipment of laboratory which is technologically as the uh, high limit of the laboratory we have special air condition system, which is controlling 24 hours the control of the laboratory, time-lapse technology, spindle weave technology, and many of the experience of embryologists. If we talk about our team, we have up to 20 years of experience of IVF specialist and up to 10 years of experience of embryology team. So thank you very much for uh your interest and thank you very much for um for the chance of this presentation i am just waiting your question to try to give you answer of course this will be the time for your questions so please okay. everybody uh type the questions uh in the chat section not waste any more time uh, we will go with the first question and the first question will be this one how many live births have there been and how old are those children now have they followed their development for any problems uh, actually as i we met uh, we don't have yet uh, any live birth in and also with our uh, partner clinics uh, we will have the first uh, live birth on uh, december so i will try to share with you the all information about this live birth but of course there are several reported uh, live birth uh, in the world so already five live birth from the spindle transfer and two live birth from the nuclear transfer already reported uh, of course there is no any uh, fatal or uh, morphological development problems on the baby till now so first baby is from the spindle transfer already 13 years old and there is no any uh, development problem
thank you for the question and the answer, of course, as well. The next question, which we have for now, and let me see, yes. Do you have an age limit for the woman to have this treatment if the age donor is in her 20s? Uh, of course, age limit is uh, quite crucial and important. So up to 40 years old, as you know, uh, follicular development is decreasing and also number of follicles is less and quality of oocyte quite uh, decreased. So that's why uh, for the technology has more chances less than 40 years old, but Still, if there is a dominant follicles, uh, up to three dominant follicles and up above 40 years old, still there is a chance uh, for to get uh, mature eggs and to proceed to proceed this uh, nuclear transfer and spindle transfer. If we talk about egg donors, of course, egg donors age is uh, important. So should be our egg donors should be 20, 28 years old uh, age limits. And of course, thank you uh, for explaining this to us. Uh, somebody is typing, so we will um, take a second and wait for the question which is coming up. And we have it now. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can PGTA then be performed on the embryos to further discount and genetic career diseases from the father? Uh, of course, we try for all of our patients uh, for the spindle and nuclear transfer and all embryo is going under PGTA uh, or NGS technology. So we have to be sure about the aeuploid blastocyst and of course also possible before the treatment to make uh, genetic carrier testing, disease testing for the donor, for the, uh, for the mother and for the father, of course. Uh, we have the next question and let's take a look on this one what is the cost of the treatment uh, if we talk about cost of treatment of course i am here for the just the clinical base so according to your connect uh, contact with the clinics uh, you will get from our international department all all the cost about treatment uh, yes as always everything from today uh, is forwarded to the clinic uh, tomorrow directly. So if you have any uh, such specific questions, um, we will, of course, uh, let Linick know as well about um, this specific questions. Thank you for uh, the answer and, of course, for your question. Somebody is typing. So in uh, the meantime, I will um, publish the question which we have um, on our social media about that. Okay. So if there's um, anything you can tell us about this, using nuclear or spindle transfer, what are the risks? Anything to be worried about? Uh, actually, uh, nowadays there is no any mechanical or technical risk uh, during nuclear and spindle transfer. So nothing need to worry about uh, the technique or about the damage of the cell. Also, what can I say about mainly about technique? Uh, of course, now this is kind of process. So every day with a group of patients and uh, new culture system. So we are developing system much and much more. So I think that the close time uh, that will not be any other thought. It will be like regular IVF treatment. Of course, different, different regulation in different countries. So most of the countries doesn't allow to use such technologies. Uh, yet uh, but as my uh, clinical experience show that it will be future technology for the people because it's at the moment most of the people um, and most of the child is fighting with mitochondrial disease there are many mitochondrial disease so these techniques is totally avoid the chance of mitochondrial disease and it's a big feature and we have quite um connected question to this mm -hmm. what you just mentioned so yes is this practice banned in any other countries as far as you know uh, actually on yeah many country uh, doesn't have special regulation for that and even totally ban it but um, in ukraine and uh, several countries there is no special regulation for nuclear transfer and spindle transfer uh, while according to this uh, we are able to give these services 
Yes, and we have uh, one more question, um, let's say, uh, on the topic which we are now uh, talking about. Why is the procedure not listed on uh, IVMED website? If yeah, as I said, uh, okay, that procedure is quite uh, quite interesting and new and also is discussing on the many countries and according to their regulation is banned. So we are international clinic as I've met and we have many international patients. Uh, that's why according to that disrespect, so we didn't put in our list in the website uh, as, uh, as services. Mm, of course. And we have the next question, which we will take a closer look. If you are more than 42 years old and have a good ovarian reserve, would it be allowed to be a candidate for the procedure? Of course, if you are more than, if you are more than 40 years old and still if you have good ovarian reserve, so you have chance. But of course, you have to consider also uh, quality of endometrium and receptivity is a main factor because while we will get the aeoploid blastocyst after the nuclear spindle transfer, so we need to have really good condition of endometrium so which we can have chance to achieve pregnancy. And thank you for uh, your answer to this question and for the question as well. Mm, we have the next quite practical question, but I don't know if you can uh, tell us more about it. But how is IVMED different than Nadia Clinic offering it, who is also in Kiev? Of course, IVMED clinic and other clinic has different strategies and different facilities. So, of course, we are following all the regulation and law, but everyone is giving different kind of services. So, we are not able to know what kind of techniques are they are using and what what kind of services they are giving. So, that's why between clinics there are difference for the uh, offer the service and other issues. And uh, thank you one more time for this explanation. Uh, but yeah, as I suppose, it's uh, not possible to answer in one hand, yeah. right? Um, we have a question which uh, appeared already, a follow-up comment. Uh, so I will uh, publish it one by one and maybe sure. uh, comment it somehow. Uh, so if the factor, not any problems from the mother, but just an age is in uh, of course, donor egg program is always as alternative. So if you not considering to carry up just only your uh, genetic material, of course, still available to use uh, donor egg program. Another question, as I said, uh, about age, of course, always uh, donor program is available. As I said, okay, this is the alternative to donor programs. So donor programs already is available, but while well, you have to know if you choose the donor programs, uh, you will carry up just the father gene. So that will not be uh, possible to nuclear DNA of mother to carry up. Of course, and thank you for your comment on that as well. Uh, I have one more question which was asked um, via email, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. So I will take this one as well. Mm, and I, me I think that um, this was... Uh, to mean, uh, uh, com yeah, comparing to um, mm -hmm. straight IVF, let's say, is this process procedure any more complicated from the patient perspective? Uh, system will not give process will not give any complication during the manipulation of the patient or uh, preparation of the patient. It's not different than uh, classical IVF treatment. Uh, so we have to prepare in same time donor and uh, patient for the egg pickup with the hormonal stimulation uh, and same test we are doing for the donor and for the intended mother uh, during the stimulation so there is no any kind of risk or complication during uh, preparation or during manipulation Yes, great. And thank you for uh, letting us know about this and explaining uh, this uh, process as well. We have very uh, similar 
question. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's a uh, great that we have it now. How many times would we have to travel to Kiev? Uh, actually, uh, of course, basically you need to come only two times to Kiev. First time when we pick up the eggs and second time when you need to get transfer. But of course, this is kind of choice of you. So if you have if you trust your own doctor in your country, so your IVF specialist can prepare you for the uh, for the pickup or site pickup and for the embryo transfer. In this case, you can just come uh, one or two days just to make this process and to back to your country. But if you want, uh, IV Med Clinic will give you all the services. Of course, you need to spend uh, 15 to 20 days for the stimulation and egg pickup. And of course, uh, again, approximately that, that period for the embryo transfer preparation. And thank you for the sharp no. answer to this question, uh, which was very practical mm, indeed. Okay, this will be also the final call for the question. So if anybody waits until, please type the question in the chat section. Uh, but in the meantime, I will show you, thanks as a shout out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, attendees uh, for the answers to the questions and yes the next question is also uh, here can we transfer our egg and or embryos from New York to Kiev of course you can transfer your your egg and embryo from the another countries to Ukraine uh, our international department uh, will help you for the process uh, for the transport and carry up the material and it of course doesn't affect the eggs or embryos no. there is no any risk carry uh, up for the frozen embryos or frozen oocyte under the uh, cryo dry shipper condition there are many uh, responsible and professional uh, cryo transport company which which will help you and as i say our international department will give you maximum support for that okay thank you for the great question and your answer um, to this uh, as well uh, we have the next one which is a little longer yeah. but anyway i will publish that and read does the transfer of two embryos increase the chance of pregnancy? Because some say that if we transfer two embryos, there is more risk of failure. And they explain this by the fact that if an embryo does not implant, then he will take with him the second embryo. It is a French speaking coordinator of a clinic in Ukraine who told me this without any scientific explanation. Actually, this is quite crucial to, to transfer one embryo or two embryo. Uh, but uh, last research are showing there are um, there is no reason to make a two, two embryo transfer while because we are choosing with PGTA techniques of the aeoploid embryos and this aeoploid embryos is giving much more chance uh, to, to make implantation in the endometrium. Uh, of course, there are a lot of different factors uh, which we cannot um, able to uh, understand about the receptivity of endometrium. That's why always one embryo transfer is the more smart strategy to get the pregnancy, especially if we are using such spindle or nuclear transfer uh, techniques. Uh, how many aeoploid embryos do we have? Uh, that means we have that much chance. So that is the main situation so one embryo transfer and to have many reserve embryo for the next trials and thank you again for the answer and your question uh, as well we have the next question on the list so what's the percentage of success if the egg and or embryo is from a woman during um, age 47 uh, if we talk about percentage of success, of course, for above 45 years old, uh, I cannot say it's very high, but for the egg donation program or let's say spindle nuclear transfer program, if we get aeoploid embryos and if we have really uh, high endometrial standards, of course, there is a chance uh, at the moment is regular uh, pregnancy rate in the world 20 to 30 percent. 
for the above 40 years old but still uh, with these techniques of course we are increasing the chance much more and if endometrial receptivity is not is fine and if endometrium doesn't have any kind of uh, problematic situation of course there is a big chance to assure pregnancy and thank you for your explanation to this matter yeah. as well mm, yes thank you uh, for being with us today and uh, of course i mean uh, thank you birol for being with us and thank you everybody who um, joined us today it was huge pleasure as always to meet you here. The recording will be available uh, on our website tomorrow. And of course, to stay up to date, uh, you can follow us on social media. So of course, we are here next week. And if you join us, it will be, of course, huge pleasure. So hopefully we will see here again. And uh, Birol, if you want to add any final comments, uh, you can do that now. So thank you very much for your uh, interesting questions. Of course, we will try to support you as Ivy Met uh, with all of your other questions and technical details, whatever you need. Uh, thank you very much again for this uh, nice evening, and I, I wish you all of you the lovely evening. Yes, and the same from my, from me. Uh, have a great day or night wherever you are. Thank you one more time, Bureau and Ivy Med uh, Clinic, for uh, being with us today and for your time. And for today, it will be a wrap. Thank you. Good night and bye. <laughs>